Hey guys, this is Krista from the Moratorium. Do you like grizzly gore and mysteries? Of course you do. That is why I suggest you subscribe to my blog, Suspended Animation, Dormant Stories Waiting to be Told, where we at the Moratorium offer a number of lurid tales from axemen running around New Orleans to phantoms in Texarkana. And if you're feeling especially generous, head over to our Patreon, where for just a couple bucks a month, you can help the moratorium grow. And that would be pretty kick-ass. And remember, long live BHS. Let's see what we got here. Insane action scenes? Check. Parking garage repelling? Check. Gang on gang violence? Big check. Cemetery martial arts montage? Hell yes. An overuse of male nipple? Well, we've got a lot to talk about on that subject. Cue the music. And in three, two, one, I already forgot it. You will be soon to speak as a giant, or I call the others dead. I think I imagined all of it, don't you? You think I'm insane? That's feng shui. A match made in a bathroom. Just floating into the void. Uh, But anyway, all I was going to say was, I think it's ironic that Cher was in a movie called Mask because now her face has become like a wax, just flat, white she, I didn't realize she was 75 and because I haven't wanted to look at her in 20 years or ever. Tim. I've never, no. Remember when she got her butt tattooed and like humped a cannon on like a <laughs> Navy, like a uh, battleship? Wasn't that an Aerosmith album cover? Yeah, that too. I'm more nasally today than I have been because oh. I was out in the yard Let's have an allergy corner every time we... <laughs> well, I just want to tell everybody why it's not like this. Hey, Bob. Bob. Bob, I don't think I could go to school today. Bob. Do you push the Nintendo closer to me? Give me some tang. Can you can you make, Nintendo. Me, make me some tang? Ooh, asking your mom for tang sounds really odd. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't think tang is... Does it have vitamin C in it, or does it just taste like it's... Or it had a sticker that said it had vitamin C on it, right? Yeah. I was watching a few trailers because uh, some some of these newer uh, trailers are better than the movie we were watching this week. Oh, Uh, (laughs) God. My third note on the page is... My God, why? Why have I done this? (laughs) What what have I I done? It's a good laugh. I'll tell you. Oh, my God. I laughed out loud at one oh. scene earlier. We'll we'll get to it. But, oh, my God. It just caught me off guard. I'm glad I wasn't drinking anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so absurd that it made me laugh. Um, I also started watching uh, The Manson Family. Uh-huh. I have, I have not seen one second of that. <laughs> uh, I watched about 10 seconds of it. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty rugged. <laughs> And you brought us to this. Oh wait, yeah. Let me let me just stop us there. Say, hey, welcome to the moratorium. Hi. I get this out of the way so we can just get started with the show. My name's Tim Cornman, and with me as always is Jason Walker. Hi, hi guys. Oh, and I'm sorry for this movie. <laughs> I'm. I apologize in advance. Did you have a rough time? Did you find yourself like walking away from it to go like get a cool drink or something, or did you just like ingest all of it all at the same time? Um, both. Both. So I watched it with my wife, and she fell asleep, and I was nodding off. Mm-hmm. And so we just turned it off. And I came back yesterday and watched the entire thing while I was having my morning coffee. That's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. But I still had a hard time. I was like, all right, all right. I need to walk around a little bit because yeah. <laughs> watching this martial arts <laughs> flick, which is exactly what this this movie is a martial arts masterpiece. It really is. It's a love letter to. Uh... <laughs> uh, 
I think I have it written. Yeah, it's uh, Drunk Kwando, I think is what everybody <laughs> knows. <on this. laughs> they're all doing some approximation of it, but they're kind of stumbly, like David Carradine trying to do like an action scene when he was in his, <laughs> you know, 50s. I mean, just like waking up and like before you brush your teeth, just have a couple of shots of whatever's mm-hmm. laying around. This movie... That it just feels like long pause. (laughs) (laughs) What brought you to Jim Van Bever? You brought him up before when we were going with, uh, we were talking about what was it, Chum Scrope Sucker? What was it called? Chunk Blower, I think, is his unfinished uh, magnum opus. (laughs) Can we call him JVB from now on? Because Van Bever is such a. Or just call him Bebs. Bebs. Hey, Bebs. Bebs. <laughs> Over here, Bebs. <laughs> His nicknames on IMDb call him Big Jim <laughs> and Jam Handy. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like that one. I do not like that one at all. Um, let's run down the cast of characters because I that's another thing that made me laugh. Anytime somebody else was introduced, I was like, oh my god, they're either <laughs> gonna have the name? most <laughs> they're either gonna have the most normal names ever, or I mean, like if you look at IMDb, it's Danny, he's the uh, mm-hmm. leader of the spiders. Goose is is our man uh, mm-hmm. JBB. <laughs> Christy is Goose's girlfriend. Right. It's not don't get too attached to her. But I got confused with with her and the other girl that was more slutty and going Iris. with Danny. Was that Iris? Because no, Iris shows up and he's totally smashed. And oh if it wasn't God. for closed captioning, so many times on closed captioning, in in parentheses, it just said shouting indistinctly, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that would be a good name for this movie because it said that like twenty times. Indistinct shouting is what you're getting through 80% of this movie. Okay, so Danny, Goose, Christy, Keith. Does JVB's gang have a name? The spiders are the bad guys. The swans? Oh my God. Uh, the the Sherpies. Yeah, no. Sherpas? It's it's Sharpays? It's a it's a bird. Okay. It's it's, it's a bird. Holy crap. So Yeah, it's a bird. That's why he's goose, because oh, he's with the the hawks or whatever. <laughs> that makes total sense. Right. The bird that the, just primarily goes <laughs> like <laughs> that's what I want to be <laughs> defined by. The ravens. The ravens. That's what it it's is. Pretty, it's the ravens. Holy it's shit. Badass. Stubby? I was way off. <laughs> The Sherpies. <laughs> what the hell's a Sherpie? I don't know. Uh, yeah, Stubby. Yep, Stubby. And Bone Crusher. They hang out <laughs> yeah, last together. but not least, <laughs> Bone Crusher. <laughs> Stubby and Bone Crusher are like uh, the Lenny and Squiggy of this. Actually, Bone Crusher is sort of the... He's kind of the comic relief. I don't I don't know if they intended that to happen, but yeah. he is. His monologue? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get this uh, movie going in the background so I can read off some of those. When he does crank, when they... Well, okay. We need to calm down. But I mean, like, a guy named Stubby Mm -hmm. is hanging out with Bone Crusher. I mean, I think it's like Animal House where you're just kind of given a name and, you you know, you're Otter and you're, you know... There was an Asphalt. Just the name Asphalt? Asphalt, Bastard, and Touche were some other gang members. Are you sure about that? I am sure about that. Could I pick him out of a crowd? No, because <laughs> I actually got I got Stubby and, and Bone Crusher mixed Okay, up. good. Because if you watch that scene, I think Bone Crusher, Bone Crusher is the other guy. Uh, yeah. He's the guy that looks like when he's not in a gang, he's like the assistant manager of like a tire store or something. <laughs> he does not belong in the in the spiders. Very well manicured mustache. His m- uh, close-up shots Ooh. on his mouth while he's Ugh. going. Blah, 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 no blah, blah, thanks. Blah. <laughs> Bone crusher. Eat a mint or something. Lord. <laughs> but anyway, so I, this is going to be. I don't know if this is going to be a long one for us or our shortest movie ever because 
There is no plot to speak of. I mean, there is JVB, the writer, director, editor, special effects person. And and head goose. (laughs) Yes, he is a goose. Um, He was drunk most of the time. But anyway... Yeah, that's what we started off talking about was just him being drunk with Iris. Oh my god, just, that scene. Was he slobbery drunk or was he acting? Oh no, no, no. Or both. No, no, no. I think JVB is very method. I think okay. in order to <laughs> inhabit his character, he must be just pig drunk and like eyes barely open. And I don't know that cocaine sometimes it looks like Coke, sometimes it looks like Splenda or something. It's very like granular <laughs> what Anyway, it's your basic rape revenge, you know. It's like the crow, but yeah. way drunker, and he doesn't have supernatural powers. This wanted to be the crow, and considering this was like 1988. It's still in the 80s, so. But it looks older yes. than it actually is. Yes. It has the feel of like a trauma movie, and I was surprised mm-hmm. that it was not a trauma movie when I saw it, when I first saw the trailer. Trauma does have a movie called Combat Shock that I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it is the feel of that movie is very similar. Okay, but then they have some like you know Toxic Avenger level special effects that kind of put it in a weird category. So it's really a drama until you see some of the effects, and you're like, okay. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> this movie, however, buckets of blood and, I mean, used to pretty good effect. There were a couple effects that uh, I enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about the bu- buckets of blood and the sound effects that go with said Oh, God. Blood. Whoever did the Foley in this. <laughs> oh, I assume it's JVB. There's a... Uh, like trash compactor burial that that is real squishy it's like (laughs) i don't know what he was doing putting mayonnaise in a uh, (laughs) jello in a sock yes exactly that's exactly what i was thinking of so i get questions right off in the first part of the film so okay christy goes to see to have a seance right or not a seance or her tarot read or palm read what yeah that lady is definitely scamming her yeah. I also kind of got the feeling that they were related somehow. Oh, bye, Grandma. I'm going to blow your candles out for you. Love you. <laughs> yeah. She puts on her, uh, again, like within the first five minutes, you see a, a Canadian tuxedo. She had like acid wash jeans <laughs> and stone washed jacket. They almost oh, matched. Yeah. But can we back up just a second <laughs> and say when the first image that you see is like a flea market knife uh just being dropped into like a big puddle of beer um <laughs> yeah. there was a cheap ninja star in an ashtray i love that there are so many ninja stars man in this oh man film. i understand jason in your backyard you had a plank and we threw knives and ninja stars at this that is thing. like my origin story really Th- yes, I say it. this was just a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not, this is not when you were a teenager. <laughs> Things would be a lot different if I had seen this movie when it came out, you know, uh, because him working nunchucks in the cemetery, that was... Uh, I think all martial arts training sessions usually show up in cemeteries, don't yeah. they? This is just a place to hang out. Yeah, and you have lots, <laughs> lots of things to kick, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess... At least he has some skill. I mean, because it, his chucks, yeah, his nunchuck, yeah, I think that was pretty impressive. Uh, sure, effective. No, he's got those real. <laughs> oh well, tell that to the fucking guy that got a concussion from <laughs> when he stole that fucking bike. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets off the motorcycle, takes off his helmet, and gets a nunchuck just, across the face. Just, and he says, like, oh, shit. Like, right before he yeah. walks up. <laughs> that is, that's the scene I was talking about. Well, I'm going to start oh, the yeah. movie. We'll get to that. And, I mean, it literally, like, I would have done the biggest spit take all over my computer. So, to catch up with it, she goes to see a psychic. Sure. But she comes out. I, I dig her car. You know, it's like a oh, little yeah, Chevelle yeah. or whatever, yep. right? So she gets attacked by Danny, who yes. is the head of the rival gang, correct? Yes. Or one of the heads? Yes, one of the... Well, yeah, later on. They consolidate, but we'll we'll get to that later. 
I think Trent, our friend Trent, had a uh, haircut similar to that when he was in high school. No I've seen pictures. So. Not Van Beber, but... Not, not Van Beber, Danny. But Danny tries to rape Christy, which is Goose's girlfriend. I, there, She's parked on the street. He leaves the door open. Yeah, he's not thought this into through. Into the street <laughs> <laughs> as he's trying to rape her in the front seat of her own car. Yes. He knew who she was, right? Uh, yeah. She calls him Danny. You know, she's kind of like reasoning with him. She's like, okay, Danny, just stop now and I won't tell Goose, you know? Right. Do you get the idea that they were friends growing up Uh, in like grade school? No, I think their relationship is purely uh, motivated by the uh, gang uh, thing. (laughs) <laughs> where is this supposed to be located they're filming it in dayton so ohio like ohio yeah <laughs> which also was funny i can't what did he say exactly danny said like um you know something along the lines of nobody will blink an eye if this happens because you know just look around look at the neighborhood you know and i was like the neighborhood it actually looks pretty great like you know <laughs> that, that guy that has a lawn he's at least mowed and you know it's free of graffiti and Mm-hmm. Yeah, looks just like a normal street. Later, we get into some really scummy neighborhoods. Yeah, that's not when good. he goes to visit his dad. Uh-oh. Question mark. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Another thing that's making me laugh is <laughs> when she's leaving the psychic. The camera kind of pans around, and there are like fifty candles <laughs> lit on their on her oh, mantle. Yeah. But she takes such care to blow that one out and it's like mm-hmm. yeah, it's just like uh, I'll get this one. Yeah. Just could you just But my emphysema <laughs> I can't blow out the rest. You've doomed me, child. <laughs> You've doomed me. Yep. She's like, bye. Thanks for the uh whatever yeah. advice. <laughs> the necklace that she gets features prominently in the movie but i don't it's is it a cross a uh, kind of a celtic cross yeah maybe jvb has a very strong reaction to it and i didn't know if that was just because oh, yeah. he was like blasted on cocaine or he really did not like uh but he was it's real strange because he accepts it later like okay yeah they had sex and he's like oh yeah you can put it on me now yeah i'm cool now get there baby it's just uptight earlier it seems really really odd that we try to move into it real quick where there's a battle between the gangs in the cemetery yes the ravens and the spiders if we've got that right goose or jvb shows up with what what is that a russian negant yes that's what this it is appears a, this to is be. a world war ii yes. rifle and i have no idea if that thing would actually work it, again every no. prop came from a flea market basically yeah. um, i buy that yeah there seems to be a, like a lot of uh like 22 pistols i think yes. later he has like a 22 pistol a 22 revolver yes does not look very f- intimidating no a tiny little gun at the beginning he was like putting like a. uh, uh yeah, like kind of pounding little X's into the top of it. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. If you scored an X in a bullet, would that make it I, the fragments yeah, fly out more? That, or does he just think he's being badass? No, that that's what I think is that he heard somewhere okay. that that would make it like, a, you know, like a hollow point or, or like, yeah, like it would fragment. Okay. But it, it's still a 22. You know? Yeah, it's <laughs> still, a, you know, it's not going to do a lot. If you've got a couple of layers of clothes on. You're, you're probably fine. Okay, so this gang fight, quote, quote, unquote, I mean, Danny, first of all, JVB has like a masquerade, uh, like a uh, Batman and Robin style. He's like got a Robin mask it's on. He's got a Batman symbol on his forehead. That's Danny. <laughs> That's Danny. Danny looks yeah. like he has the underwear that he has when he was five strapped to his head (laughs) with that weird mask. Do you think they, was that some type of like thematic thing where he's Batman and JVB is Robin or something? It was very silly. It's like, you know, yeah, there were gangs in West side story, but they basically just kind of Mm -hmm. danced around and 
So that's exactly what they're doing right now is dancing yes. around having this knife fight. They both brought guns, <laughs> but have now chosen to just yes. have a knife fight. Yes. Well, they're, uh, you know, they're abiding by the laws. They have a code is what I'm trying to say. Did you have one of those knives growing up that had the like knuckles. a knuckle duster built in? I did. Yeah. I think it yeah. actually broke at the at the handle, and so I probably tried to throw it at our shed or something. <laughs> I assume. While that shed was on fire. If I know me, <laughs> that's what happens. Okay. <laughs> Another really awkward facial stabbing. Yeah. What was the other movie that we had with an awkward facial stabbing? That was in The Sentinel. When yeah, she that's cut right. cut off his nose. That's right. Yeah. Weird angle to have your wrist at. Not very ergonomic. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say they're fighting this kind of like drunk Kwondo fight that they're having in the cemetery. <laughs> That's what we're calling it. Just get used to it. I love it. Danny's got a chain wrapped around him, but it has like that protective covering over it. So it doesn't like scratch something. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that was funny that he, yeah, he's got a chain, but it's like, it's not going to hurt as bad. He <laughs> just wants to lightly lash you with it. But there's a scene when they're fighting uh, right in the middle of that little kind of intersection in the cemetery where the camera is kind of moving in and to the side on them. Uh -huh. Every once in a while, there's like a cool shot that you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, he's not completely untalented. He's trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he did go to film film school for like one semester. <laughs> And he made a film. Yeah. yeah, he did. He accomplished what he set out to do. Uh, this fight, though, the choreography was really off. Yeah. On it, you know, so they're facing one direction one time and yes. another direction another time. He hits Danny several times with that knuckle duster. Yeah. On that knife. Yeah. And Danny goes down and spits out a couple of oh, teeth. Oh, yeah. He kind of <laughs> dribbles them out of his mouth. Like, <laughs> So they were probably loose before the fight, and then that just kind of <laughs> knocked them all the way out. My name's Goose. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be a dentist today. Yeah, what do we got? Here, just drink this bottle of Ripple. They drank a lot in this film. Oh, God, man. And for real drank, I, th I mean, like, literally, I don't know what kind of headspace Bone Crusher had to be in to deliver some of those. <laughs> JVB really scored when he landed him because he adds that, like, really, like, having a problem, possibly psychotic, you know. I think a lot of his performance is actually him, you know. So he's got a nice big gouge on his hand and a cut on his face. So he takes a bottle of liquor <laughs> yes. over his hand, pours it on his face, and then takes a drink. You know? It's a drinking problem. Can't quite do it right. <laughs> Christy is uh, nursing him, trying to sew up his hand. The bathtub that he's in is just, it looks like pure blood. Yeah, just you know? full it's of just, blood. He, he has lost so much blood from this hand wound. And it's also like that Herschel Gordon Lewis blood where it's so bright red. It looks like paint. Yeah. You know, those are the scenes that I like when they're, I mean, there's scenes later where they're, that blood is just everywhere, everywhere. I think this movie did male nipple abuse. Yeah, you see Goose's nipples a lot. They're like pepperonis. Also, you see his naked ass, like, within... I'm getting ready to see it right now. Which, okay, I got a question here already. So they he does not have a job. <laughs> Him and his girlfriend so... <laughs> are not working. He does not work at a bank. How did he get the cocaine? Also, later on in the movie, he just randomly has cocaine. Yeah, he comes out of nowhere with like a kilo of cocaine. Yes. Three uh, giant bags. Yeah, unclear. But I, I guess he actually says crank because he asks yeah. the guy, what do you want with crank? And it's some, that is some businessman saying, I'll sell it to kids. Yeah. What do you care? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He looks like a uh, weatherman or something. Yeah. He looks like yeah, Will does. Ferrell yeah. doing a character with a wig on and stuff. I just watched that scene where you see JVB's butt. Yes. He gets out of bed and he puts on jeans. He's going commando. Yeah. And he zips it up so Ooh, fast. I flinch every time. That could have gone really <laughs> wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Franks and Beans. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and he's the director. He's like, okay, keep that camera. <laughs> Is my ass in the frame? Good. Right. 
I want that birthmark on my right cheek. Exactly. Yeah, close in on that. Exactly. <laughs> I love it when he leaves and it's like you get home from a long day of like practicing <laughs> <laughs> in the cemetery. It is it just, actually all your martial arts. Just come home, hang your nunchucks up on the nail right beside the door and just stab <laughs> your throwing knife into the trim on the side of the door. He's like, oh, man. I got to get out of the rat race. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> Christy has a martini for him. And but no, he got into an argument with her when he left. She wanted to put the necklace on her on him and he was yeah. not having any of it. He just wanted to leave so he could go practice his art. Yeah. In the cemetery. She was just being a real, just being a real <laughs> bitch. Like, Shut up. Go to hell. I'm going to the cemetery. But his little montage of, uh, Working those chucks Man. in the cemetery. Yeah. It, it showed him he had a little bit of skill there, but he did like a spinning round kick into a small twig. Yeah. He's like, yeah, that was Danny's face. Take that nature. Yeah. I would not want to be near him while he's doing that. I don't think he has the super accuracy or anything. But he's like six foot five and just flinging himself around with nunchucks and stuff. So he is dangerous in that respect. He's pretty confident in his kicks. I mean, yeah. he throws a lot in this movie. Yep. Yeah, I'm curious how old. I mean, we could find out really easily, but I'm curious how old he was during this movie. So, well, you said this took over a couple of years. To yeah. Make. Did you yeah. say that? Yes. Or? So he was in his early 20s. He was like 23, 24 okay. when, the, when he was in this. So I have really conflicting feelings about this movie. I'm, I'm amazed that he put it together, but it's, it's just such a mess. Yeah, there's a lot of missing plot holes. Like, uh, where does he go to get the crank? <laughs> I think he stole the motorcycle. He goes home and tells oh my Chrissy, God. Okay. hey, I got a motorcycle. <laughs> so wait a minute. We have not addressed that. We've talked about it briefly, but like... <laughs> there is like a guy that he can see there's like a neighborhood past the cemetery he's looking out the cemetery gates to see this guy to scream at the landscape <laughs> you motherfuckers <laughs> who is he talking to but I uh don't know <laughs> but he jumps that fence and there's like a kind of John Stamos, you know, kind of like a Dollar Tree right, John okay. Stamos. <laughs> he just pops him once in the forehead. Oh, man. He goes down like a sack of potatoes. That made me laugh so hard. It is very funny. He's like, hey, I found a bike. And which I expected him to wreck immediately. Yes, exactly. Crash off. right off screen. <laughs> uh, isn't that a Honda? Is it a Honda? Don't... No, that's a Kawasaki. Oh, that's a Kawasaki. I'm sorry. I, it kind of looks similar to your uh, shadow, but yeah. isn't that what you've got? Yeah, close enough. Okay. Yeah, he's got a bike. He got some crank. That's what he says. He said, you want to go get some crank. How are you paying for this crank? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess he saw that bike and he got that pretty easily. I mean, that's I what guess I was he thinking. Probably... Is he going to go sell it immediately <laughs> for money to buy crank? <laughs> but no, he, he takes Christy on a on a bike ride right. to go do some rapage in the woods. Yeah. He's like, uh, honey, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get some groceries. And then he just walks into the grocery store and just hits the... <laughs> cashier in the head with nunchuck <laughs> runs out with some ramen or something i mean he's in a gang you know they probably do gang activities sell cookies or something she wants a relationship and she wants him to leave the the gang yeah and she wants to get him nude in this little wooded area i'm yeah. not a fan i just found a tick on me yesterday and i watched the scene <laughs> and i'm like "Ooh, guys there are better places <laughs> But then you see their bedroom and it's like, well, maybe you guys should well, be in the maybe. woods. <laughs> Less chance of getting a serious infection. They're in a, a sleeping bag that I assume they just found oh, in the woods. God. The word <laughs> musty does not even come close. Oh, so he's going to leave the gang. Yeah. What is the significance of that necklace? Because it doesn't I, save them. Is it a cross and it, or is it a Chinese star? Oh, my God. If he had been able to use that as a weapon, that would have been cool. Uh, but he doesn't. Nope. The psychic lady gave her that, right? To give to him? Yeah. Okay. 
I don't understand why. It has no real significance, so why are we even using it? I don't know. And also, he had such a strong reaction to it. I don't know. I could uh-huh. see if it was like a cross, you know? At least, no, you know, maybe he, you know, hasn't had a good uh, relationship with religion. Maybe. But no, it's some weird... It looks like those things that you put beads in and then, like, bake in the oven. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, I have no idea what you're talking no. about. Somebody out there probably knows. All right. Yeah. So next scene is him talking to Keith and Keith does not take his resignation very well. He has a black dress tie yep, for a tied head. around his forehead. Yes. I think that's probably pretty standard. And it looks pretty good, actually. His <laughs> ensemble is way. Actually, I like Goose's uh, outfit, too. I like his boots and his jacket. Fingerless gloves, though. Never understood him. Did we cover who does he call a scum fuck at so is that Danny? <laughs> that probably. There's some language in here that was quite yeah, sorry, I didn't want to startle anyone, but <laughs> there is going to be some cursing later if kids are listening to this. I should have said that before I said scum fuck, but well, now I'm thinking Iris is Danny's girlfriend that tells him she's pregnant. And I, I'm confused because I, there's one other girl that shows up. Yes, right? the one in the bar. He punches the shit out of her. Yeah, he does. Just a right cross and knocked her down. And then laughs insanely. I, I want to talk about JVB's boots. I love them. <laughs> I fucking love them. I think Stephen King would call those motor huckle boots. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but uh, he uses that term every once in a while. You know, they look like what the bully in um, Christine should be wearing. Yeah. That the guy name? who is not John Travolta. Not John yes. Travolta. He is a imitation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to take a quick break? Uh, Sure. Hey, Freaksters and Freakettes. It's Tim from the Moratorium. Do you like the sweet sounds of our witty banter in your ears every week? Well, head on over to our Patreon And for only $3 a month, you can get even more. In the director's cuts of our movie episodes. On average, that's 20 minutes more of our wise-cracking, jive-talking, and lip-flapping laughter straight to your ear holes. Go to themoratorium.com and click on our Patreon link, and you'll find five awesome tiers with tons of goodies. You can also find our Teespring link on the website for even more awesome merch. Thank you for your support. Now on with the show. I also, I, I kind of mixed up my notes here. I did want to mention the, um, we didn't really talk about that first real special effect, which was uh, them bl- uh-huh. blowing that hand off uh, RoboCop style. Yes. Uh, that looked pretty gross. That was strange because he's like, I don't know whose hand that was. It was the guy that shot at him. He pulled a gun and somebody came up behind him and shoved a knife from behind him into his neck. Right. And they kind of tackled him to the ground yeah. and J- JVB just points the gun so straight yes. and shoots off his fingers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like, like shooting at something that is like his eye height. And somehow a guy on the ground, maybe it ricocheted or something. Maybe that's maybe that's a uh, advantage of uh, you know using your cheapy knife to uh, carve X's into the top of it. It'll just be like oh, that's you know, right. shooting over here. That's how you make a magic bullet. Your hand exploded from shot with a twenty-two. <laughs> um, oh, also one more note that I missed. Um, did you notice that? A gong sounds when he starts his cemetery fighting montage. No oh, man. <laughs> and there's a gong. There's an outro gong too. Bang. I didn't notice so. that. Now I did notice that the sound effects for his doing the chucks has that old martial arts movie whoosh sound. I don't think that is a sound effect. You think he's just so quick? He's got those good, like, nunchucks that had, like, ball bearings in them, you know, so they could actually turn uh-huh. around rather than, like, look, we can, we'll talk about nunchuck <laughs> minutia <laughs> another time. But uh, I think that was just the sound those fucking things make. He needs to, like, spray okay. some WD-40 in there or something. So him and his girlfriend made up. Yeah. And he's leaving the gang. He told Keith that he's leaving yeah. the gang. 
This is the whole setup. For some reason, the other gang, because they were kind of merging the gangs, but they still want to get back. Danny still wants to get back at, at JVB. Right. Yeah. I almost thought that that was kind of a ruse that they were going to like go along with it, but then the, the main thing was just to, look, you can't trust these guys. That's what we're trying to say. Especially Bone Crusher. <laughs> but when JVB goes out, and I think he's going to go sell the crank yeah. that he's just acquired from where they were in, just in the woods, no telling I, what he found uh, unclear. stashed up inside her. <laughs> unclear. <laughs> uh, but he kind of dresses up a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. It seemed yeah. weird that he like yeah. has like a clean white shirt on. He's like, this is my drug dealing shirt. Got his pants tucked into his boots. Yes. It doesn't do that for just everybody. But then he leaves. He's like, I'll I'll lock up when I leave. He locks her yeah. into the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a kennel. He's kenneled her. Uh, but that lock uh, can't stand up to golf clubs. So I guess not. Which we'll see in a minute because. Bone Crusher and Tubby. Stubby. He looks like a youth minister. <laughs> he also has a tie around his head. Could they not find bandanas? <laughs> I feel like a tie would be much more expensive than maybe it's like those, uh, you know, kind of like dark tourists, you know, where they like they have they have like a corporate job. But then on the weekends, they like slum it in a gang or oh, something. Yeah. OK. That might be what this guy is up to. He wants to feel alive. He's a suburbanite by day, gang member by night. Stubby. <laughs> Stubby. They are out in full daylight, <laughs> screaming at things. Oh, my God. Bone Crusher's monologues. I, I want to memorize a couple of those. He delivers it, yeah. too. You, they get some real close-ups in his yeah, eyes, he man. he seems and unhinged. He made this up on the spot. This is just who he is. This is not written no, in no, the script. No, no, no. Every... I, <laughs> Script. The script would literally say screaming incoherently. <laughs> so he says, give me that rush when they walk out. You know, they're mm -hmm. destined to, uh, yeah. you know, this is not going to go well. Uh, Craig or whatever gives him that thing, which, I mean, he snorts it so, like, furiously. Um, is that one of those little, uh, like... Pixie stick yeah. powder I candy. think so. I think so. <laughs> Man, give me that rush. Yeah. And then he immediately says, uh, that's nothing compared to the rush you get when you're killing somebody, man. <laughs> Craig's like, holy shit, what right. have I gotten myself into? <laughs> that's Craig was the his office name, but Stubby. I, he night. identifies as Stubby <laughs> when he's in the gang. <laughs> Christy's consulting a Ouija board. By herself, Christy. That is not... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess we see how that turns out, but... Isn't that what happened to Reagan? Yep. Captain Howdy. Yep. Yeah. But she asks it, is uh, Goose going to die tonight? It's like, no. But you are, bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like, oh, yeah. I should not have done that. <laughs> I'm watching Stubby in the background. I can't not... Look at Stubby. <laughs> I'm listening to Bone Crusher and looking at the like the emotions that are on uh, Stubby's face. Do yeah. they call? Why do they call him Stubby? I mean, when the camera pulls out and you see them standing next to each other, Bone Crusher is quite a bit taller than him. Maybe it's just a height joke. Yeah, and maybe that's why the camera angles kind of that angle, so it makes Stubby look not so Stubby. Yeah, exactly. But if you right. look at okay. his face <laughs> when. When Bone Crusher's talking about killing people and stuff, he's like, oh, man, I cannot, I yeah. cannot <laughs> wait to get away from this guy. Did Bone Crusher at some point say that uh, I will pull your eyeballs out of your head and eat That was them? Danny talking to his, uh, <laughs> the mother of his children. Which he kind of choked out. And yeah, he choked her yeah, a little bit. Oh, so see her weird. Boobs. Yep. See your boobs. But I guess that this movie uh, is listed for some high violence. Yeah. And yeah, we've had some violence, but it is it is a little toned down until the, the end. The last 20 minutes of this movie are fucking amazing. That saved it for me. Because I was kind of, you know, I'm watching on my computer, so I'm kind of doing other things at the same time. And uh, I just... Like taxes. I, yeah, and, shit, yeah. you know. 
Paperwork. <laughs> Lots of paperwork. I've got so much paperwork. Yeah. Mostly TPS reports. Yep. <laughs> Bone Crusher says, I hate people, man. I don't care. He also said, I am the best motherfucker in the world. Man. That's, that's <laughs> up for debate. JVB, though, on the, uh, on the street. Mm-hmm. Reading a newspaper, <laughs> pretending to yes. read a newspaper. It's somehow looking more suspicious <laughs> by doing that. <laughs> Completely standing out. Again, it could be the fingerless gloves. Yeah. You know, the dark sunglasses. kind of gives away the game. <laughs> so the guy, I guess, who's going to show up to get the drugs from him, they go back to a back alley. He pulls a gun yeah. on him. And JVB does some, like, quick moves to kick the gun out of his yeah. hand. He gets a knife out, puts it up to his throat, and he's like, oh, man, you, you're you dangerous. That was hilarious. You're not as good as me. Yeah. <laughs> I liked that line, actually. Because he's kind of like, he came in real close to him, you know, kind of like he was hugging yeah. him. And he's like, you're dangerous, you know. <laughs> I kind of like it. Makes me hot. JVB does have some really cool hair going on. I must say that. He's got a nice full head of hair. It's almost a mullet. Yeah. He has bangs for sure. Uh, it's way cooler than, yeah. Yeah. I wanted hair like that oh, growing up. Oh, absolutely. So we know he's at least gotten $200 from these guys. Okay. For the crank that he sold. That transaction was confusing to me okay because then so that is the guy that he eventually sells it to that pulled a gun on him it's like the guy's goon yeah right i guess he wanted to see if he could get it for free to steal the crank yeah right and van beber wasn't having Fuck, it no they fucked with the wrong <laughs> wrong waterfowl for that you fucked with the wrong <laughs> <goose>. <laughs> Waterfowl. I don't know if a goose is technically waterfowl. Sure. Who knows? I, I, I'll i take it. Look it up. They literally could have gone to any alley and found a better weapon than a golf club. I mean, <laughs> they probably... You can swing those around with a lot of force and probably... Um, you for sure could kill somebody with one of them. Oh, but yeah. But they're so awkward. Oh, yeah. They're like five feet long and anything... You have to hit it with the head. Like, if you hit it on the like shaft of it, you know, it would just bend right in half. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It seems like a poor weapon choice. When there's guns everywhere. Everybody everywhere. Has guns. Christy has a gun. Yeah, but she doesn't know where the bullets oh, are. That's right. That's why they come in and they beat the hell out of her with a putter and a driver. And which bone crusher, he talks about it later, but he says something about snakes. Yes, her intestines look like snakes. It's like, oh, snakes, man. Yeah, that was fucking wild. And they're not even swinging the clubs overhand. No, they're like... <laughs> they're like mashing grapes. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what they're doing. <laughs> Which it sounds like mashing grapes because JVB comes home to find her dead on the floor. Yeah. When he picks her up, you can hear all that squishy sounds. Right. And this is probably the finest performance I think we would ever get out of a JVB. Yeah, he's really... He is in that moment, probably because they killed that girl for real. And he is like yeah. <laughs> feeling remorseful. Well, if she was hurt and possibly uh, him holding her looks so uncomfortable. Yeah. That girl has to be dead. Yeah. He's like twisting her the way she shouldn't be twisted. Or yeah. I when you see somebody laying bloody and broken on the ground, the first thing you want to do is just like move her neck around a lot and, you know, yeah. her spine. Hyperextend her neck. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Does Goose get into his apartment the same way every day? Like climbing up the fire escapes? <laughs> I guess. Or is that like the back way? That's just the way. This is the coolest way to get to his apartment. I guess. He's like a white trash Batman. He finds his girlfriend dead. And instead of trying to get seek medical help or Call no, she's me. dead, we might as well just get rid of the body. Yeah. I mean, she's just bloody to us. But then uh, Bone Crusher said that he saw her intestines. So. But so he's just going to get rid of her body. You know, yes. eh? she had family. Uh, well, this is how she would want it. Exactly. <laughs> and a trash compactor. Yeah. Which 
do they just have trash compactors that you can man it that a a citizen can like, or you know just an everyday person uh, my next question unclear <laughs> why how oh my god that's so funny though it literally is like it's a giant trash compactor yeah. too i mean it's got some mega force Ugh. him crying out is just he's really dude the amount of blood that's dripping off of jvb pouring out of him that's her blood. Okay, I I didn't know maybe like his hand wound had reopened or something. Or he goes to a nasty abandoned apartment complex and breaks in through the fire yeah, escape. He's doing some parkour stuff for a guy as big as he is. I mean, there are no stunt people in this he movie. He is the stunt department. JVB stuntman. We are coming up on. The most insane scene in the movie, which is saying something. Are you talking about him getting into this apartment complex and it has instant hot water? Oh. That is so unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> if there's one thing in this movie. Yeah. That completely took me out of the reality of the movie. The lights work and there's instant hot water? <laughs> what I the mean, fuck? That's, like, that's a nice space. You're just talking about the other major screen time for Mel Nipple. Yes, the scenery chewing. <laughs> this guy, this guy. JVB's dad. Yes, gives a very eccentric uh, performance. You find <laughs> out that he's high on heroin later, which is like, okay, well, yeah, maybe, but maybe, maybe. But you took my last beer. Oh my god. <laughs> JVB kicking his, like, kind of clearing off the table by propping his feet up yeah. on it uh, is, like, the cleanest this kitchen has been <laughs> in a long time. The only effort given. So Dad comes out with a baseball bat and threatening oh him because God. he stole his last beer out of the refrigerator. Yes. That actually works. But there was a uh, yes. there was a rat in the wall. And right. dad turns around and starts swinging this baseball bat at, at the rat. Yeah. The first time he swings it, I swear there's a cartoonish boing yeah. thrown in there. <laughs> so the choices are just strange in this movie, but for the most part, entertaining. If you can get past all the male nipple. I don't know that I was entertained so much as I was just annoyed and disgusted <laughs> by this guy. Which... And his dad just wearing those like blue dress pants with no shirt on it <laughs> makes it so much weirder and more confusing. Yeah. This is for sure the most disturbing scene in the movie. You think? I think so. Especially when he starts really yelling. Oh, man, I'm watching it right now and there's a spittle going oh, everywhere. God. But I like the way that JVB, I mean, he just compacted his girlfriend. Yeah. She she's freshly compacted. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but he's explaining this to his dad is like, hey, man, I've had a shit week. You know, I got beat up. I beat somebody up. I crushed my girlfriend, Smushed if you him. know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, really. I put her in a trash compactor. I feel like they just broke into an abandoned house, filmed this and then left. It does cut straight to a bulldozer, like um, knocking down something. And then kids playing nearby. Right. Yeah. That was just a weird scene. He's just looking out the balcony window just to to see that while dad has come back with his heroin that he's going to shoot up between his toes. Ew. Would not want to look between that guy's toes. No. No. My wife actually, she said that that scene made her kind of nauseous. This whole, this whole thing is making, this segment is making me <laughs> nauseous. I want JVB to leave. But he looks at home. I mean, this is his dad's place. And dad's having a good time. It's like, you know. Yeah. JVB in the next scene is laying on this nasty, dirty. Yeah. It looks like the mattress from like a crib or something. It's like smaller than a twin bed. Or where you expect Frank to be coming out yes. of the floorboards <laughs> <laughs> really close exactly. by. Exactly. Or Julia, whichever. <laughs> yeah. That uh, was Hellraiser, guys, in case you weren't paying attention. We need to do those movies. I think I posted something about a series. Yes. Did I say a series was coming out? Yes. For Hellraiser? Yes, you did. Could be interesting. That would be great. Hopefully, it could be great. 
Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Dad's not moving any of the plot. No, and honestly, I've seen this scene. If we just skipped ahead to the bar scene, that would be fine with me. Iris, Iris, I'll buy you a drink, Iris. Come on over here, Iris. What is he doing there? Drinking. I think he's legitimately fucked up because, I, like I said, I've seen a few interviews with him where he is just smashed. And uh, they're not quite as bad as this. They're pretty cringy. I feel like you wanted to say surly. Not surly so much. More like, um, I don't know what he's like going for. I mean, being like out of your mind on cocaine and drunk at the same time, I think is I yep. think he's pretty much nailed it. Okay. <laughs> This is a wonderful performance. But this is Iris. Iris was not Danny's girlfriend, right? Okay. This is a totally different girl. Okay. This girl just looks like a, a cheap little hooker that's trying yeah, to get a free drink. Just, off just a couple out guys, to have yeah? a good time. Yeah. Maybe do some blow with a gang member. Do we see Danny's girlfriend again? Does she totally disappear? Can we assume that he killed her? He <laughs> just got fed up. I think you do see her again later. Okay. I'm pretty sure. They're just interchangeable. Yeah. And not necessary. Like Iris, why is she here just to make G- JVB look like he's not necessarily a good guy? He just crushed his girlfriend the day before, and he's yeah. already looking to get it wet again. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> gross, but yes. When she walks by, though, she walks around through the bar to go hit on some other guy. Yeah. JVB walks around the corner and falls into, like, a Danish case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you hear, like, the glass break, and I'm like, was that real? Like, they have, like, a little donut shop slash bar? Yeah, I would go there. Yeah, that's a good idea. I love this. So he goes around the corner because Iris is like hitting on some guy to try to get free beer. And yeah. he's like, Iris, get away. I got this guy and tries to fight this fucker <laughs> and throws this, you know, horrible drunk kick, which looks yeah. real. Yeah. The guy throws him to the ground and then Cliff Clavin tackles him. Yeah. He doesn't, uh, he gives him this mega hug, like, dude. Yeah. It's out of a, nowhere. It's not a good fighting style. <laughs> Where did Cliff Clavin come from? I don't know. So then JVB just kicks the shit out of a bum and steals his liquor. Pretty standard stuff for this guy. Does some more coke, which, again, it looks it just looks like sugar. I still don't know where he's getting all these drugs. He was broke. He pulled out pocket lint and a right. few quarters to buy Iris a beer. Right. So now there is a drug montage He has done a bunch of blow. He's already just incoherently drunk. He shoots some heroin that I assume he got from his dad. Unclear. Yeah, unclear. He takes some acid, I assume, because he pops like a little, you know, it looks like a a Jolly Rancher or something into his mouth. Okay. Of course, maybe he's doing that. Maybe Zima had just come out and he was putting like a Jolly Rancher. He was actually getting a Jolly Rancher? Yeah. This this was probably prime time for Zima. Oh, 88? Oh, yeah. Uh, we I guess we could find out, but let's not. <laughs> so, yeah, I think he's, like, trying to, like, talk himself into uh, committing suicide. He's at the end of everything. The kaleidoscope effect between kind of the scenes. The transition. Yeah, the transitions. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. He's having all sorts of flashbacks of when he just crushed his girlfriend, not five minutes ago his flashbacks like his kind of hallucinations in this are actually pretty crazy and fucked up even the close-ups on his dad's face when he's going after it that's fun that's messed up nightmare inducing so keith wants to save him is that what he shows up to kind of slap (sighs) some sense into him yeah it seems like kind of a means to an end but you know, this guy is ODing as you're talking to him. Do you really want him in on your bank robbery uh, <laughs> yeah. scheme? Maybe he just knows that uh, Goose is uh, frosty in the clutch or something, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that from, like, aliens or something? No, that's... I'll get back to you on that. I don't know where okay. that came from. Keith is not... He's either a really good friend or um, <laughs> he needs... 
JVB for something. You think they just need more people? He's just looking for another warm body? I Yes. We need I, as yes. many people. You're the only one that can repel off of a, of a <laughs> freaking parking garage. We need you. <laughs> They're probably not wrong. Uh, well, he does say something when they start and set up for this bank robbery that he was like, you better not miss. Yeah. So he's talking about his Chinese throwing stars technique. Yeah. Because he starts repelling off of the side of that uh, that parking garage and throws oh that God. that giant that throwing star, star is huge yeah. into the back of the guy's neck, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ready to get to the end of this movie, just because it's so <laughs> insane. Yeah, so Keith's uh, hangover cure really worked, you know? <laughs> what, shoving a baseball bat in your he throat? Just, he just <laughs> OD'd on coke, acid, and heroin. And he's like, oh, thank God. Splash some water in my face. I feel fine now. Although he does barf when he gets hit by oh, a bat. Oh, he does. That looks real. I'm sorry. That looks, that looks really looks real. <laughs> real. Like he totally just barfed. I think I saw a cigarette butt come out when he when he puked on the baseball bat. <laughs> so the, even this title, "Deadbeat at Dawn," it's confusing. Well, when you think "Deadbeat," now I think "Deadbeat Dad," which would point to his dad. Okay. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think his dad's the deadbeat at dawn. No, deadbeat at so. dawn makes it sound like it is a noun, like it is a person that you're going to meet. I think JVB is the deadbeat. Okay. And at some point, he is at dawn. <laughs> I don't know. I really lost it there at the end. You did. Thought I had something. Yeah, so this is kind of leading up. Danny's there, who he immediately tries to... He tells him he's going to rip his fucking throat out. And then Danny acts like he doesn't know anything about right. what happened to Christy. Yeah, he plays it off pretty good, because I kind of yeah, bought him. Like, like, well, maybe he didn't know that Christy well, he was dead. specifically told Bone Crusher to kill her. Did he say go kill her or kill him? Her, I think. I, I could be wrong, but I swear... You don't think he, Bone Crusher just showed up and, and killed her just because he uh, yeah. was all fucked up? I don't know now. Now I'm not so sure. Maybe they just attacked her because JBB wasn't there. But that Bone Crusher just got a big telegraph <laughs> power punch to the gut <laughs> yes. that looked like it barely touched him, and he is acting his ass off. D is that where Danny asks him if he knows where the solar plexus is? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, hey, uh, Bone Crusher, remember where the solar plexus is? And then punches him in the stomach, like five Not inches right here. below. Yeah, exactly. Sucker. It's like, hey, you know where your face is? <laughs> Head or gut. Oh, my God. Bone Crusher might be my favorite character in this movie. This performance right here where he's talking to Danny is amazing. Is he truly just fucked up on drugs while he's talking to him, though? I'm looking at his pupils. There is a tiny little line of blue that you can see, and all the rest is black. <laughs> so, you tell me. Yep. Snakes, man. They look like snakes. She has snakes coming out of her belly, man. He is selling it really good. It's it's. He's very wide-eyed, yeah. Oh, he's he's out of his mind. And even fucking Danny has a problem with it. <laughs> yeah, Danny, like the most intimidating gang member. So all of this just shows the gangs are now conjoined. Water under the bridge, kind of. Now Keith is, you know, they've integrated the gangs and... But I think Danny's whole thing, I, I don't think he ever wanted to... He was always going to double-cross them, I think. That was his plan. Yeah. He just needed bodies for the bank robbery. So they plan this bank robbery. Somebody planned this bank robbery. Or this armored... Yeah, armored, armored truck robbery. robbery. Yeah. Right. Which happens so quick. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll get to it in a second, but the getaway car... The trunk was open and there's like six guys the in it. The trunk was open. It's like the most... Okay, guys, we didn't think this through. Yeah. We don't have enough seats. Goose, you're going to have to ride on the hood. 
Also doing your like brinks, you know, if you're working at brinks and you're parking down like a alleyway. Are you kind of asking for it? You're kind of asking for it at that point. Kind of asking for it. It's like when Danny's girlfriend told him that she was pregnant. Yeah. I would have just kept that to myself, knowing how volatile Danny can be. Watching Bone Crusher's performance here as he grabs a snake. He's amazing. He's dangling in front of JVB's face, trying to get him to start a fight. You realize that Bone Crusher's wearing, like, leather pants? Yes. And his movements, his actions, I think you're right. He is. He deserves an Oscar. He does. Or at least a daytime Emmy yeah. for this performance. <laughs> William J. Bone Crusher is his name. <laughs> it's his Christian name. B.J. Bone Crusher? Mm, that sounds like a 70s like detective uh, Porn show. star. <laughs> Aurora porn star. So if you're going to rob a bank, would you walk there <laughs> oh they, yeah they, they're they running down the road they cut through a parade yeah is it a parade or is it just a marching band practicing i think that really was you know just a parade that they were like okay let's get some you know took it upon film. themselves to, to film this action sequence to make it the, the production value. We got yeah. a fucking parade. Make sure there are children around when you're doing all this, you drunken, insane <laughs> maniacs. So I'm watching uh, to the rappel repelling. down. Yes. Yeah. This is not a stunt man. This is JVB. No. With a, a crawl yeah. sized <laughs> Chinese glaive. star. <laughs> yes. It's like he taped two knives together or four knives together. <laughs> I remember like gym class, like he, he's coming down that thing so fast. Oh yeah. That's got to burn. His gloves don't have any fingertips in them. <laughs> and that thing is like right on his, his crotch. That fight sequence though, when they attack oh, the yeah. armored car. So the one guy gets the Chinese star to the back of the head. Bone crusher. Is he the one that grabs that guy and twists his neck backwards? It's a, He crushes his bones. (laughs) (laughs) How do you think he got that name? (laughs) I didn't go to four years of bone crushing school to be called Mr. Thank you very much. I saw Keith drink a beer and he got most of it on him. None of it went into his mouth. There's a stripper and their after party. (laughs) Yeah, they catered. (laughs) Did we say that they got away from the bank robbery by just running like spazzes and just yeah. trying to? <laughs> JVB is on the hood of the car. Yeah. Oh, he flings himself onto the hood of the car. Yeah. I wonder how many takes it took to do that. <laughs> what am I talking about? I, these are all just one take, I'm pretty sure. One take. Uh, yeah. So they're unclear where their gang meets. Well, they said that if anything happened, they were going to split up and meet back at the you-know-where. Right. You know, it's like they didn't want to tell us either. Yeah. It's the place where we go to look at porn that we put up on the walls. Yes. There is Obviously. so many naked lady pictures on the mm-hmm. wall. There's a little Emerson uh, tape deck in the background. I, I had one of those growing up. There is a oh, yeah. wig <laughs> on the table there. <laughs> I do not want to know what's underneath that. Yeah. But they're at an after party that they don't even have the money because was it Danny's group that was actually doing the thieving? Somebody's got a big like pillow case full of money somewhere. Yes. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but Keith went into the robbery with a mustache and now he doesn't have (laughs) one. Great. So this whole gearing up sequence. Yeah. So I guess JVB knows that it's all going down or maybe he's planning to go ahead and just kill everybody and take off with the money. I think he's plotting right now for sure. He's grabbing all of his knives Yes. And all of his throwing stars. Yes. Wait, did, earlier, did you see that guy's talking, you know, just some like idiot drunk, uh, uh, like philosophical stuff to this other guy who is just wearing the hood from like a uh, members only jacket or something. He's not wearing <laughs> the jacket. 
He just has just like this the... kind of uh, nylon sack on his head. He looks like <laughs> he's in Devo or something. JVB kept all of his weapons under a Playboy. Yeah. This is, we've never even established this, but this is just uh, part of their gang house. That's what I was trying to figure out. I, I don't know if that's the Ravens or Mm-mm. the Spiders. It seems like they've gone through some changes since JVB's been gone for like two days or something. <laughs> yeah. One day, maybe. Why is Bone Crusher wearing a jock strap on the outside of his oh, pants? God. And you know it hasn't been laundered in no ever no bone crusher oh bone crusher you complete me <laughs> I like Keith's jacket they're in a warehouse yeah now they're somewhere else that JVB has just been scoping out planning to kill everybody and one of the I guess one of the spiders decides to betray everybody and pull out an Uzi and just start shooting. I think that was at Danny's order. I think he kind of gave him a cue or something. I think JBB right. though looks suspicious. Like this is a weird place to be doing this. That's why he's plotted out his escape. Yeah. He's, he's, he's spied those chains hanging from the ceiling, knowing that he was going to slide right in and yep. kick some ass. Yep. But his getaway is really odd because he runs up some stairs. Were they in a basement somewhere? I don't know. He runs up some stairs to get to the ground floor. They look like they're in a high school, like, boiler room or something. Yeah, yeah. Freddy's going to come out there, take care of everybody. Yep. One of those guys was wearing a Kruger's shirt. Kruger's only? Yeah, I think (laughs) it was was unrelated, but... (laughs) It looks like a crappy, like, 80s video, but uh, he's just blowing people away, and those guys are all doing, like, kind of the scarecrow dance. Yeah. That effect where he shoots that one gang guy right in the head. In the forehead. And all the other guys go, whoa! Like, it looked like a Beastie Boys video or something. <laughs> With his twenty two revolver. Yeah. It just, like, blew his head off. He's just running across the street with a giant dirty bag yeah. of cash. Gets away somehow. Yeah. I mean, this this chase happens throughout the last part of the movie, right? Yeah. He ends up at like a, a railway station, I guess. And he takes a nap. Yeah. Well, it's, he's, he's bushed. Had a, he's had a hard day. He's had a hard week. Man. Or a couple of weeks. He needs to do a, like a spa weekend. <laughs> That's right. Just, you know, just relax. I'm going to go down to the railways, and I'm going to relax my style. Yeah. I'm going to work my nunchucks, <laughs> kill a rat with a throwing knife. Uh, take on a train with my chucks, man. Chucks. He has a good uh, danger sense. Oh, yeah? Although it probably is the funk coming from Bone Crusher's Ooh. jean jacket that he telegraphs his <laughs> movement. The moisture farm in his nether region. Uh. Wearing leather pants, though. So. Uh, 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 uh. Ooh, forgot about the leather pants. Ooh. Please shoot Bone Crusher just from the waist up. <laughs> They're chasing him down this little kind of like highway or bridge. And he jumps off. That is him jumping off of there. That's oh, a, yeah. That's a good drop. I mean, what do you think? That's like 30, 40 feet or something? I No, I think that probably... Uh, there was a little ledge there, and he knew it was there and could make it look good. And it so right looks angle. like he, yeah, you're yeah. right. I bet he did. See, he's got talent. And this is another moment that I just laughed out of control. So they're chasing him with the car. He jumps off the bridge into the waterway. The yeah. car veers off and hits a a roadside worker straight <laughs> yes. up. who was like on his knees. I don't know what he's doing. Nope. He's just nope. on his knees, like, praying. And then he turns into a dummy and dies. Yep. And dies immediately. It was hilarious. Yeah. The car goes off the road and down into the water where JVB is trying to swim out. Yeah. He's swimming towards the shore. And then one of the other gang members yeah, floats, kind of floats up. up. Yeah. And he, and he does, like, a 180. He's like, nope, uh, nope, nope. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. I am Dead getting body. as far away from here as possible. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to, you know what I need right now? I need a Sprite. We have (laughs) seen him do heroin. We have seen him do cocaine. Uh, Just constantly drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh. Uh, 
what I really need that's is so refreshing that lemon limey flavor. Mm-hmm. And then he robs a convenience store. Yeah, well, he has a kind bag of. full. Of, why? Why does he? I guess he's just at his wit's end. He's just yeah. You know what I need? I need a Sprite and the $32 you have in the till. Exactly. You know what I need? I need an ice cold Sprite and for you to shut the fuck up right now because <laughs> I am having a bad day. Now, is this a car wash or is it a drive through convenience store? I think it's a drive through convenience store. That's awesome. I want one of those. And there's a grandmother and her grandson, who sure. looks like a Jehovah's Witness. He said, Grandma, give me your gun, and then shoots the the <laughs> convenience store guy. Shoots the clerk. <laughs> <laughs> he was the most innocent person in all of this. Uh, made me laugh so hard. Yeah. Right after that scene is where Bone Crusher says, Touche and Bastard are dead. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you for clearing that oh, up. Yeah. We don't know who those guys were. I was, I was worried what Never Joe, Joe Tushi was doing. There's a lot of spitting going on in this movie, too. Yeah, a lot of like that foamy stuff in the corner of your mouth. Like if you yeah. have like dry mouth, there's a lot of that. Have you ever spit on somebody when you're angry? Just like, you know. No. No, I've never no, done that. That's crossing a line. Now, speaking of Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah, when JVB's in the cemetery again, just pooped and decides to take a, a sit, yeah. he starts having some flashbacks of what happened to his girlfriend and then yes. sees his girlfriend in a bloody sheet walking across the cemetery. Yes. I dig that. Very much like uh, Nancy and, uh, or not Nancy, uh, is it Nancy? Tina. Tina. Amanda Weiss, is that her name? I um, got Tina. That's as far she as was in uh she was in Better Off Dead. Yes. But yeah, this little nightmare sequence though, oh, as he yeah. was just hanging out in the cemetery, sleeping. He this guy can sleep anywhere. Yeah. Get his head propped up on a tombstone. He's slept like two hours in the last month. <laughs> can we just skip straight past whatever business they were trying to do in the restaurant? I don't understand any of it. That wig that this guy is wearing is the wig that was on that table. Do you think so? I'm positive. Ugh. I feel like he was really trying to say something, and it was just as incoherent as everything else. Well, the guy that at the patron says he orders two breakfasts because he wanted one for God. It's like pouring beer out <laughs> for your homies or something. But he calls the waitress a heathen bitch. <laughs> yeah, heathen bitch. That makes no sense. I don't know. I have more questions now than ever. I think Dayton, Ohio around this time, late 80s, not great. So this is just a setup. I think that JVB comes to call Christie's sister, which we got a brief glimpse of her yeah. early on in the film when she was writing like in her journal. Right. But so she has family. So Christy has family, but he he's like, she's like, where's <laughs> yes. my sister? I'm like, uh, uh, we had a beautiful funeral. Um, she's under a lot of pressure right now. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Actually, she's probably under like a bunch of dirty diapers. Ooh. But enough of that. No, it's setting up that the girl is going to meet JVB because he's going to give her the money. Yeah, which, like, let's get a preteen oh. girl involved in all of this and definitely bring her to a spot <laughs> where all of the gangs will be. This little fight right here, I really like the way it was filmed. Yeah? I like it when he wakes up. I mean, it's kind of funny, too, because he's just completely passed out on a platform. Yeah, at, at the train station. Can you sleep at a train station? Oh, train stations are, like, <laughs> one, yeah, one of the most comfortable... Well, you know, for people who like have to have like an ambient noise, you know, to go to sleep. Okay. Maybe okay. like it's a white noise like, thing. Yeah. Maybe exactly. I should get that for my bedside. Ding 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 ding. Oh yes. Oh what a day. Just feel the tension going out of my shoulder. <laughs> but okay, so that scene. There's some cool camera moves in this where he, he pulls that knife out and the camera kind of like spirals around into his face, yeah. you know? I thought that looked really cool. He uh, 
he swept the legs of a guy here in just yes. a second. That's did it better than Johnny did. It. <laughs> <laughs> There is one, like, Shaolin monastery shot where he kicks that guy and it goes into slow motion. That was kind of cool, too. He bites the platform hard. <laughs> he definitely chipped a tooth on that one. So, Bone Crusher was in the sewer and pops up out of the... I don't. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> he was just with the rest of them, though, I think. Yeah. He just, like, warped into World 2 and then just, like, kind of (laughs) came back out. No, but you're right. This fight sequence, once JVB gets the nunchucks, he fucking goes to town. It reminded me of Old Boy. Oh, yeah, where you're just following him from, (laughs) yes, From death to death, (laughs) just killing everybody. He wraps the chain around that one guy's head and just torques it down and i know i was like is he gonna try to pop that guy's head completely off of his body bone crusher apparently all of the drugs he has done today have given him like super strength (laughs) because he picks up like a what would you what it's a metal pylon yeah it's like a pylon that's the only word that was coming to me (laughs) but uh, i mean obviously it looks like cardboard that they've spray painted Mm -hmm. black it's not a convenient weapon. No. I think in Bone Crusher's blood, blood, blood <laughs> drug addled state, although his name is Bone Crusher, yeah. <laughs> maybe he was just trying to <laughs> crush some bones. Crush some bones, yeah. That fight with JVB goes on for a long time, and he does like a Karate Kid part two, you know, with the, yes. the drum technique. Yeah. Yes. For sure. But when he throws the throwing star and stabs Bone Crusher in the forehead, that oh was God. that was awesome. It's, it's like the tiniest little star <laughs> that you would get from like a convenience store, like little glass case. It's so small. He really hits him with those nunchucks, too. He had that old red pair. Uh-huh. And then the ones he's using in this are black. Right. And I think there's just those little foam ones, oh, you yeah. know. It has to be, because he's smacking him. Yeah, he wallops a couple of those guys. I love this. He throws fucking Bone Crusher over the bridge. Yes. And Bone Crusher gets run over by a car and loses his entire head. It just rolls down the side. Decapitated by, like, a Pontiac, uh, you know, like, I think my mom had one of those cars. Like Right. He's chasing Danny down the road and then gets hit by Christy's sister driving a car. That's (laughs) That's <laughs> yes. awesome. Of all the things that, I mean, hey, that's a coincidence. <laughs> but that's just to set up a freaking, probably the best sequence ever in the movie. Yes. The, uh, the hanging out the door window or rolling your arm up in the door stunt. He drives down the alleyway and kind of scrapes him up the side of the building. Yeah, that looked pretty damn real. Well, it is real. He in an interview, he was talking about the guy playing Danny. He was too scared to get too close to the wall. And he's like, dude, you're going to have to fucking like mash me into this wall. Oh, Just God. do it. I mean, it, it's pretty wild. It tears apart his jacket. It rips up his arm. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff. You see him slap the wall of the building Yes. One yes. shot because it looks like they were getting awful close. Yes. And like bricks, like little pieces of the bricks are flying around. Yeah. So pretty good. There is blood everywhere. That Buick LeSabre, oh. it's going to be like $10 <laughs> and quarters to get that whole. They're going to have to do like a Pulp Fiction with that thing That's and just right. like <laughs> detail it after it's done. Uh, and then he bites Danny's finger. No, oh, that's awesome. This fight actually is pretty good. I mean, do you look like JVB had the upper hand until Danny bit his two of his fingers and then spit it back into his face? <laughs> A lot of spitting going, and then shakes him yeah. like he's in prison, like twenty times in the gut, man. Yeah, and I know that's just a little paring knife, but that's gotta hurt. It is exactly. <laughs> it only went in like half an inch, but he's definitely gonna have to have a stitch or two. Also, the sister during the driving part was just rabbit punching Danny in the nuts yes. while he was trying to she drive. She was in the floor 
scoreboard. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, just wailing on him. That was funny. Oh God! Then he swayzes him. Yep, just big time. Roadhouses his throat out. Yep, probably more uh, gruesome than even the than Roadhouse. Than Roadhouse. <laughs> For sure, he kind of digs at his trachea. Yeah. That was pretty gross, actually. That kind of, like, turned my stomach when that happened. (laughs) So, he's been shanked 30 times, beat up, lost a few fingers. Drowned. uh... Yeah. He he grabs the bag of money and gives it to Christy's sister to say, here, take it. As he comes at her, though, it's, like, very awkward. Oh, yeah, like, Uh, he's going to kill her, too, maybe. It doesn't look like it. And he just gives her the money, and she's like, thanks, I guess? (laughs) I didn't catch your name. I'm going to just go ahead and leave my... Goose, was it? I'm going to leave their parents' car right here in the alleyway. It's just yours now. Covered <laughs> in blood. The awkward I'm dying walk yeah, that he does... He really is like hamming it up a little bit. Yes. He's shattering it. He's hurting my ankles. Yeah, he's walking on, He's walking like Keanu Reeves, kind of. Yeah. He's got kind of a Reevesian hair there. Yeah. But, you know, he deserves it. That's his death. That's his death scene. He dies, right? Yeah, I, I assume. I mean, uh, there's there's not a sequel to this, is there? No. Well, he actually did talk about doing a um, Day of the Deadbeat. Deadbeat at noon. He did name this with uh, Dawn of the Dead in ah, mind. He's a big uh, George Romero fan. Gotcha. So. Those two girls are sitting on that park bench, and I can't decide if they were in the movie or if those were just, just real people, <laughs> real like, people that happened to be there. I think they're real people. Yeah, it would not surprise me. And then everybody got arrested. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in real life, I think. <laughs> Before the armored truck scene, when mm-hmm. they're trying to rob that, they pulled a mattress out into the middle of an intersection. Yeah, and set, set it, it on, on fire. fire. Why? As kind of like a, a diversion, I'd like to think. Oh, my God. Let's run through this parade, set a mattress on fire, <laughs> yeah. and then it's, run to the other side of town to to <laughs> do a robbery. It's just like heat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost, almost exactly <laughs> like that. I, I think I know who stole their idea for the movie Heat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got an eye on you, Tony Scott. Oh, Tony Scott passed away. But anyway. I thought that was Michael Mann. Was it Michael Mann? It was Michael Mann. It I'm sorry. Mann. I thought it was Tony Scott. Anyway, I want to think that that was real shit. That they actually just set up a camera, had some friends run out into the intersection, set a mattress on fire, and run away. I, I'm positive that's what was happening. <laughs> I don't think those were friends of family in those cars that were pulling up to the intersection. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think he, you know, can talk people out of things, you know, because they should have been arrested for a couple of these things. And uh, he just explained, look, you know, we're making a movie. So anyway, I tried to look up some more information about Deadbeat at Dawn, and I don't see how much money it was made for. You know, it's it's got to be. He said he initially spent 10,000 bucks. That was his student loan. But then, yeah, it was a couple of years before it was done. So I assume a little bit more than that. Right. I mean, just the bare minimum. We need film and we need a camera. I think that's just all they had. (laughs) So did this actually make any money? I don't think so. He talks about that in uh, one of those interviews. But no, no, I don't think it made like... I don't even know where it was like released no I, I can't see a lot of information here did you watch this as a teenager or did you no 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 i would say in the last like five years really yeah yeah and you decided to take us along with you thank you <laughs> <laughs> well just i mean what do you think i mean it's we for, needed to see it right for, for no budget yeah for laugh value some gore shit thrown in there lots of blood it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I did. Yeah. It was fun. The act three is why you're watching it, you know? Yeah. It, it gets pretty good at the end. All right. I buy it. It's yep. good stuff. Thank you for yep. making us watch Deadbeat at Dawn. You're welcome. 
Uh, if you guys want to see this movie, you can check it out on Tubi for free. Or you can watch Joe Bob's. I would like to hear what Joe Bob had to say about it. Did he give it good reviews? Yeah, he said that uh, him and Chaz Ballin were a couple of the only people that, you know, sought it out and reviewed it when it first came out. So Awesome. That's just right up his alley. So, Well, good stuff. Yep. All right, guys, let's wrap this bitch up. What do you say? Let's do it. Jason, tell everybody where they can find us. Just go to the moratorium.com. That's it. Everything you need. All you have to do. Links to everything. You've got a phone. Yeah. Look it's, at that. It's phone friendly. Yeah. Yeah. And you can check us out on social media. You can find us everywhere. We are on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. Uh, we have Twitter. We have Instagram. Check us out posting all the time i've started amping up the amount of posts that i'm putting out there get in part of our group and just start posting some weird shit we like to see uh weird movies that you guys think we should watch deadbeat at dawn is probably not one that i would have sought out <laughs> if it wasn't for this show thank you jason you're welcome i did you guys a favor yeah and if you don't want to watch it well we covered most of it there is a lot yeah. of gore, though. There's a lot of stuff that's uh, that's good. The acting is uh, is uh, yeah, acting um, <laughs> super realistic, <laughs> hyper realistic. That's right. It's like a, a Gus Van Zant movie. Or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys, if you want to help support this podcast, you can go over to our Patreon and throw us a few bones. We would appreciate it. We are working on a skeleton crew here, but uh, it still costs a little bit to keep this barn burning. Please, guys, if you go over, you can give us as little as a dollar a month. But if you want to give us a little bit more for three dollars a month, you can get the director's cuts of our movie episodes straight to your ear holes. It's some stuff that I'd really want you guys to hear, but you're going to have to give us back a little bit. And then I'll, I'll shoot it right over to you. Yeah. Cough it up. <laughs> Give us your money. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, hey, check us out on all social media. Check out Chris's blog, Still Going Strong. Good stuff coming from her. Check us all out at the moratorium.com. Moratorium.com. It's pretty good. All right, Jason, you got anything else to add? Nope. All right, let's shut it down. All right. Bye, guys. There was a cat in the scene with uh, JVB. Yeah, it had a reaction shot. Yeah, it had a reaction shot. And the cat comes back and sees him on the platform of the train station and kind of like crosses his path. Do you think that that cat represents something? I don't know. A black cat crossing his path. But the cat sounded like Pod Cat. A little bit. When he's sick. <laughs> he just comes onto the scene with a... Uh, <laughs> I I hate to tell you this. Podcat has passed on. Oh, no. Podcat is no longer with us. No? How about the ghost yeah. of Podcat? Uh, ooh, what was that? <laughs> what the hell was that? It sounded like it was coming from within the walls. <laughs> it's coming from within the litter box. Ooh, haunted litter box. <laughs> Make that movie. All right. All right, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night. You've been listening to The Moratorium, an M.T. Cornfield production. You know, hosting The Moratorium has been a blast, and we hope to be around for quite a long time. But we need your help to grow this bitch. Tell a friend about us. Force a family member to subscribe. If you keep listening, we'll keep bringing the funny every week. Shoot us an email and tell us what we did right. Hell, tell us what we did wrong. We want to hear from you at moviemoratorium at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and long live VHS.
the script would literally say screaming incoherently. 